Welcome to our calibration, demonstration, and use. We are going to show two calipers, a nice start caliper and let's just say a lesser brand of caliper. Uh, we're going to show how to hold it, how to use it, how to make measurements, and the features behind this. Taylor here is holding a start caliper. We're showing it here in her hand and she's going to put that back in its case temporarily and show you our lesser brand from the blue case. It is a caliper and mic combination set. So she's holding it properly. You see how she has it in her hand with her thumb on the thumb wheel there? And that's what you're going to use to open and close the jaws on the caliper. She has opened the little set screw below the bezel and she's going to rotate the bezel here to set the zero so that the zero scale matches the pointer. Once she's got it in its correct position, she would tighten the set screw at the bottom, and we have our zero complete. You should generally take some kind of paper and put it between the jaws and extract it out to keep it clean prior to use. Here we have the start caliper again. She's showing it, closing the jaws, opening the set screw, and turning the bezel so that the zero matches up properly with the pointer and then she tightens back up the set screw. Okay, so we're going to move right along to how to make the proper uh, measurement here. So the caliper needs to be level to your work surface. It also needs to be straight across. So she's showing a couple of incorrect positions there and then ultimately we want to hold the jaws on the lower section of the jaws, we don't want to bring it down low on the workpiece. That's considered to be incorrect. You want to raise it up so that you're on the thinner part of those fingers. And then there is a set screw on the top that you can use to actually hold the caliper in position in the event that you want to pull the caliper away from the workpiece. So here we are again holding it on there incorrectly and then we're holding it correctly and setting the set screw. So now here's how we want to read it. We want to read this lower scale here. It's kind of like a ruler. Wherever you see it come up against the body and then we're going to use the dial for the thousandths of an inch. Remember you always want to read to the lower number. You never want to interpolate between those and try to go to the higher part of the scale. We also have on the other side of the jaws we have little fingers for making an inside measurement. So that's what Taylor just pointed to. And if we use those we can actually pull that between two surfaces like she's demonstrating here and if we care to we can also use that set screw before pulling it away from the article that we're testing. Again we're going to use that lower part of the scale which is inches and tenths of an inch and then add the thousandths of an inch onto that. So she just read 0.581 inches on that. There's also this little finger that sticks out from the back which is used for depth. Taylor's demonstrating how you would lower it into the workpiece down to your work surface and then you can set your screw again and pull that out from your workpiece. So here we have it and again we can read on the lower scale there which is in tenths of an inch and inches and then add on the thousandths of an inch to it. So she's read 1.558 inches for the depth. Okay, we're showing a picture here of how to align the caliper properly with your workpiece. You'll notice the workpiece is held in the lower part of the jaws and we're keeping the caliper completely level and in a straight line. If you're measuring an outside diameter or an inside diameter, you want to hold one end steady and then swing the caliper back and forth to find the widest part of the larger number on the caliper. That's how you'll get a true diameter measurement. 
Lastly, we're going to show you here how to make a nice measurement. You notice we're, re we're showing two tenths of an inch on the left. We're not quite seeing the three there, so point two is added to the right column. And we're showing 63 on the dial, not quite 64. You never want to interpolate and go with the higher number, always the lower number. We add in 63 thousandths to make 0.263 inches. We hope you like our demonstration today. Thanks for attending. Take care.